Before we start today's video, I have a question. If this show sucks, can we revoke International Women's Day from existence? So, after watching the second season of Jessica Jones, I have the feeling that I should go on a bit of a tangent right to start off. Do feminists just not realize how completely and totally depressing they are when it comes to their creations? I'm genuinely convinced that this show is so depressing and scatterbrained just because it's how feminists see the world. During the course of watching this show, I feel like how I watched it was the ultimate way to watch any sort of entertainment that is feminist-oriented, with a giant headache and lying down in a state of perpetual misery. If I had a significant other, I guess at that point I would consistently be telling them that I have a headache, I'm not in the mood right now, dear, so I can get the full women experience. Ugh, this show is just so full of misery and depressive elements that I feel like my Netflix subscription should come with a noose, some arsenic, and a box of razor blades. Granted, I subscribed to Dollar Shave Club, so that last one was already in the mail. Or if not that, and I'm supposed to just understand the misery of a woman, maybe I should just, you know, bleed for five days, eat a bunch of ice cream, and then cry. I don't know. I don't understand how this sort of thing is supposed to go. Because I am a man. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get the biases out. I didn't like Jessica Jones Season 1. I thought they took a complex and interesting character from the comics and turned her into a boorish killjoy. Quite frankly, I lay this at the feet of the showrunner, Melissa Rosenberg. And before you throw it out there, it's not because she's a Jew or anything like that, but it's because Rosenberg really doesn't understand the character as a whole, but tries to feminist her up a bit too much by over-focusing on the drunken, angry parts of the character and de-emphasizing the parts of the character that actually make her interesting. You know, like how Brian Michael Bendis in the original comic took the character of Jessica Jones and made her seem like, oh, I don't know, an actual human being that I can relate with? To be frank, the only saving grace that the first season of Jessica Jones had was the villain. Casting David Tennant as, in the comics he's known as Zebediah Kilgrave, or the Purple Man, was a stroke of genius. And he's right up there with Kingpin, Eric Killmonger, and Loki as one of the best villains in the MCU's history. However... The idea of his staying power ended with a snap, crackle, and a very loud pop. Honestly, if I could characterize the first season of Jessica Jones, it would be watch it for Luke Cage and David Tennant because they're the only things that are consistent in this show. They're also the only characters that you can really identify with because the rest of them are barely characters as it is. With season two of the series, it seems like the creative team addressed that particular weakness but in doing so created another weakness where they didn't have one before. Let me say this. All the virtue signaling and feminism splaining that we got leading up to the release of this second season ended up doing the show no favors. If you're going to boast that you're trying to capture the frustration from Hillary Clinton's loss and showboat about how every episode is directed by women and women only, every screw-up, makes your agenda look stupid and not worth indulging. If the future is supposedly female, and women are so great at this sort of thing, and they are so superior and they must be heard, then I'm assuming that because women are so great at directing and making a television show, that Daredevil and Punisher would be blown out of the water, right? Wrong. What I find funny about all this touting is that elements that I would consider to be feminist in narrative end up making everyone in the series look like garbage people. Men come across as largely opportunistic or callow, but it's always in response to female characters being self-indulgent bitches. It's kind of hard to take the whole yes, queen, slay thing as a positive when your supposed independent mindset leads to people killing one another or your girl power mother-daughter moments ask the watcher to ignore that one person in that pair has literally ripped someone limb from limb or has murdered police officers. Also, you may have an all-woman directing roster, 
but I'm guessing that you kept the male cameraman because I caught quite a few shots that emphasize how nice Kristen Ritter's legs are. And like Kristen Ritter's legs, the staff of this show just go up and make an ass out of themselves. Although with the staff, it's not as nice as Kristen Ritter's behind. But seriously though, that camera guy, you're a real American hero. Anyway, Jessica Jones Season 2 is by and large better than Season 1, but not by a giant leap. It's like comparing a job promotion to getting a slight bump in your hourly wage. Yeah, your car payment just became a little bit more affordable, but you'd kill for that corner office that Matt Murdock and Frank Castle now have in the office building that is the MCU. This season is a much more character-focused story than the first one, and actually manages to portray Jessica as more of a human being with actual flaws, rather than some, you know, angry wench with a drinking problem and a gap between her legs that would be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway with how much she gets around. She has emotions beyond angry and actually experiences the consequences of her actions long term. Holy crap. It's almost as if that's what human beings go through. Goodness. Who'd have thunk it? Though oddly enough, that's one of the positive themes of this story, that being a surly bitch makes life miserable, that you shouldn't be drunk all the time and indulge in too much casual sex because it makes things worse, and at some point it's good to open yourself up and let people in and be in healthy relationships. Huh. It's almost as if the whole party lifestyle and free sex lifestyle just leaves people empty and alone. Hmm. Who'd have thunk it? On top of that, I think my favorite character of this show, or at least this season, is J.R. Ramirez's character of Oscar Orocho, who's an ex-con termed building superintendent who plays Jessica's love interest throughout the show. Yeah, he forges government documents, but at the same time, he's a dad who loves his family and, outside of his screw-ups, is a genuinely good dude. He's sort of an artsy kind of guy, but he's also portrayed as your classic blue-collar handyman. Ironically, he's a competent father figure. It's a rare sight in today's media, which I can get behind. His purpose as a character is basically to put Jessica in a situation where she's required to allow herself to heal from all that past trauma that she's gone through, which is one small sliver of how the writers solved a problem of characterization from the last season. They make Jessica sympathetic. Because let's face it, in the last season, given everything that she has been through, you want to feel bad for Jessica Jones. But because she has no emotional range in that particular season, she comes across as unable to sympathize with. That sort of attitude worked well in Defenders because she is one quarter of a whole. And she can do that in conjunction with other main characters and build off of them in a way that comes across as constructive. She provided really good comic relief in Defenders. But that's because that style of writing, which isn't super character focused because she's not the main focus of the show, worked a lot better in that scenario. And Jessica Jones season one did nobody any favors. Now, back to season two, most of the characters are very sympathetic and the show has a lot of shades of gray, quote unquote, to it in regards to storytelling. Because of this, though, you cannot expect a traditional supervillain in the story. Kind of weird, I know, but this is not a cape story. If you've read Alias before, which is what this show is based on, you'll understand that. For most of this season, it is a whodunit kind of a story. Granted, that makes sense because Jessica's a private investigator. Long story short, the plot has Jessica tracking down the scientists who made her the way that she is and gives the background of how she came to be who she is power-wise. Though many people criticize the lack of a supervillain, I'm actually fine without one. The Alias book always had one major villain in Purple Man. I say keep it that way. Jessica as a super-powered Sherlock Holmes comes across as making a bit more sense to me. What drags everything down is how absolutely miserable this story is. More so, the misery isn't often portrayed as something that characters are 
actively attempting to either overcome or avoid. That, in and of itself, makes the show a bit of a slog to get through. Now, do these sufferings serve a purpose within the story? Yes, they do. Even so, that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. If you think you're going to get some closer to a situation, guess what? The answer is hell no! Characters are willingly going to do something incredibly stupid to continue to screw up their situation. It's like everyone just wore their stupid hats to work. Or there's a giant idiot ball that people just pass around. What makes it funny, though, is that the biggest idiots in this show, the feminist show that's supposed to capture the anger of Hillary Clinton's loss in the election, are all women. And the most sensible people in the story are men. We have reached peak feminism, folks. Jessica Jones shows that all women are impulsive, irrational, and purely driven by emotion while men are logical, sensible, and try to make their best out of the situation. <laughs> hey, seems realistic to me! <laughs> Game over, yeah! In all seriousness, though, I, I actually did enjoy this season a bit more than the first one. But the big hang-ups come from the tone being such a downer, on top of the events that the writers try to make us forget. Okay, spoiler warning. So the super-powered villain of the series brutally murders several people by twisting their heads around 360 degrees, throwing them into glass cabinets so they get impaled all over their body, or literally tearing them limb from limb. As in, like, a Mortal Kombat fatality. This brutal murderer turns out to be Jessica Jones' mom. For the last few episodes of the series, we're supposed to forget these events, plus Jessica's mom's murder of a cop and attempted murder of Patsy Walker because of the power of family or something. Meanwhile, the rest of the cast is thinking what you're thinking right now. Jessica's being an idiot by trying to help her mother get out of the United States as opposed to calling Iron Fist and Luke Cage to help subdue her mom and get her put behind bars. Again, there are consequences for these actions, but the points where the writers expect us to see Jessica's mom in a different light are pretty hollow when we remember the brutality of her crimes, and all you have to do is hit the rewind button. This element simply was not very well thought out. Not to mention the subplot of Jerry Hogarth. Though there's a part of me that's getting older, that still appreciates Carrie Ann Moss looking amazing in a black dress, her character's pretty freaking evil in this show, and she suffers no long-term repercussions for being a selfish brat. Yes, I understand she's got ALS, but even so, there's probably going to be some way that when she shows up in Iron Fist Season 2, that Danny can heal her with his chi. Even my adoration for women with short hair couldn't stop me from facepalming every time this woman got away with something illegal and heinous. Also, apparently drug abuse can ruin friendships, or in the case of Patsy Walker, it can lead you down the path of getting superpowers. <laughs> oh my god. Look, I'm not against the possibility of her becoming Hellcat in the future. At the same time, I feel like the character is being rewarded for being stupid. I've never been a fan of that. Look, all in all, I don't really know if I can give Jessica Jones Season 2 a glowing recommendation or anything. It's better than the last season. It does fix the issue of Jessica becoming more relatable and actually facing consequences for her actions. But there are so many other missteps with the story that every moment of enjoyment you'd get from the series is bogged down by the abject misery of everything. To be honest... I feel like Jessica Jones works better as a part of the Defenders than she does as a solo show as things are right now. Which is not good given how much money Marvel has invested in this series. Quite frankly, if I were them, I would take the show and give it a clean slate wipe. If you want to match the caliber of Daredevil, fire the current production team and have Brian Michael Bendis take over as the lead creative director. To be honest, if this is the future that is female, if this is the best that an all-woman crew, supposedly, can really give us, maybe the future should spend more time in the kitchen making me a sandwich. My name is Micah Curtis. I'll see you next time. Deus Volt.